Hey everybody, I'm a little bit late with story time tonight and I apologize for that, but um, it's been a busy day and I am joining you from um, my little study, my little office in my house, which is where I have been doing story time now for the past several weeks. Um, before I get started tonight, I do want to remind y'all that we have a YouTube channel now, and I'm pretty sure you can just look up Central Methodist Dash Mount Airy, M O U N T, and you can find our YouTube channel. Um, we are now uploading all of the children's stories there, try to get them organized. Um, along with the weekly sermons and special worship services. Um, and I really would like to thank Eric Cook and Doug Porter for that. Eric is, of course, our music director at Central. And Doug is our tech and sound guru. <laughs> um, they've been really helpful to get the all of, most all of the children's stories up onto YouTube as well. And they're in this Facebook group as well. But you, I think you have to be on a laptop. I don't know about an iPad, but if you're on a laptop, you can go on the left-hand side and look at videos, and you can find their videos there. Um, for this one, you just pretty much have to look for me um, wearing the glasses with the lamp and the red. Um, this used to be a cover for this little love seat for... Um, our German Shepherd, um, but look for this background. Um, I'm trying to keep it consistent so y'all can find them easily. So that's for parents and grandparents um, who would like to maybe share these stories with um, with their kids, grandkids, or, or let others know um, so that parents can pull from a collection of videos either right here in this group or on our Facebook page, okay? So, you know, every week I'm going to read something totally different. It might be a, um, a condensed version of a Bible story. It might be um, a classic story that dates back to maybe one of like the Grimm's fairy tales. It could be a more contemporary or modern story. Um, lots of different types. I'll pull some that are very famous and classic. You know, I'm sure I'm going to have some Eric Carl in here. Um, I'm sure I'm probably going to be reading um, Where the Wild Things Are. Um, I've pulled some stories from my own childhood. I've borrowed books from others. And anytime I can have a guest reader, then I will do that as well. Um, something interesting to me, though, all of the ideas for the stories... Um, they pretty much, they have some kind of basis in what's going on in our world or in our community. And I've noticed that dogs have been, well, they've always been beloved, right? But dogs have been even more of a help recently um, in the past couple, of two or three months during this time of COVID-19 with the lockdowns and so forth. And people have adopted dogs um, I don't know about record numbers, but it seems like record numbers. And one of the most beloved dogs um, that was made famous, and I don't want to misspeak and tell you a particular decade, but I think it probably goes back to the 60s or early 70s for sure. Um, one of the most famous cartoons um, featured a dog named Scooby-Doo. Scooby was one of my favorite cartoon characters, and I know that he's a favorite among some of my family and friends. And so, I found a Little Golden Book. If any of y'all are familiar with the Little Golden Books, um, they literally have the gold spine, and they have been around for decades. Um, on the back of this one, it says there are over 200 Little Golden Books. But this one that I found is a little golden book about Scooby-Doo, and it's a new one. So I thought that we would share that one. 
Now, I will always end with a prayer and I will always try to share my thoughts on how I think this story is relevant now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So again, this one is called Scooby-Doo and the Pirate Treasure. Slow down, Fred, said Daphne. We're nearly there. That sign says Pirate's Cove dead ahead. Even the sign sounds haunted, muttered Shaggy. Scooby-Doo shook under the back seat of the mystery machine. Shaggy, Thelma giggled, you don't really believe the ghost of Captain Bones has come back for his long lost pirate treasure. That's just a silly story. If it's not Captain Bones scaring folks away, then who is it? asked Shaggy. That's what we're here to find out, said Fred, parking on the beach, after we unload the food. At the thought of a cookout, Shaggy cheered up and Scooby came out of hiding. The gang quickly built a cheery campfire. Then Fred said, come on Shaggy, we've got time for a quick look around before dark. Reluctantly, Shaggy followed Fred, and Scooby followed Shaggy, a little wag down the beach. They stopped to look at a tumble-down shack. A for sale sign on, hung on the door. Who'd buy this spooky old house, asked Shaggy. Captain Bones, maybe, Fred chuckled. Suddenly, something swooped down toward Shaggy and Scoob. It's only a bat, Fred yelled, but he was too late. They were already running to the van. The two of them dived under the back seat and stayed there until the smell of grilling hamburgers brought them out. Much later, after seconds, thirds, and fourths, they began to feel better. Scooby was snoozing beside the dying campfire and Shaggy was telling a ghost story when suddenly a wild, rough voice roared out of the darkness. Walk that plank, me hearties. Yo ho ho, and a bottle of pop. What on earth? Shaggy pointed at a shadowy figure beyond the firelight. Yo, look at that. Scooby saw the ghost and ran howling to the car. Fred, Shaggy, Daphne, and Velma jumped to their feet. Don't let him get away, Fred yelled. Shaggy's teeth started to chatter. Can you chatter your teeth? Look at that, Fred pointed to the sand. Footprints. No ghost ever leaves footprints. Come on, we'll go after him in the van. Scoob and I will stay here and guard the clues, Shaggy said. As Fred and the girls drove off, Scooby seemed intent on a search of his own. Have another hamburger, Scoob, said Shaggy, helping himself but Scooby was too busy digging in the sand. Shaggy grinned. We've got you there, Captain Bones. What is it? Private treasure? Scooby gave a bark of triumph. Roof! And up he came with a treasure of his own. It was just a bone that he had buried last summer. Shaggy kicked at the hole. Ouch, his toe hit something in the sand. Look, Scoob, he exclaimed, it's an old sea chest. Scooby dropped his bone to help Shaggy dig. Finally, they uncovered the lid of the chest and Shaggy wrenched it open. It is Captain Bone's treasure, he yelled. The chest full of gold coins gleamed in the oncoming headlights of the mystery machine and the very first person to get out of the van was the mysterious pirate himself. Shaggy quickly shut the lid of the chest. Mum's the word, he whispered to Scooby. A few minutes later, the Mystery Inc. gang was sharing their cake with a very hungry pirate. Now, said Fred, tell us who you really are. 
and why you've been scaring everybody away from Pirate's Cove. Folks call me Captain Dan, said the ex-ghost. I've been a sailor all my life. When I got too old for sailoring, I just wanted to settle down by the sea, but I didn't have enough money. So you haunted that old beach shack by living in it, said Daphne. Captain Dan nodded. Yeah, I figured the ghost of Captain Bones would keep folks away. Did you bury the captain's treasure too, Shaggy asked. What treasure, asked Captain Dan. This treasure, Shaggy opened the chest. Captain Dan gasped. Why, there's enough gold to buy a hundred houses. Mystery Inc. shared a look. Captain Dan, Fred said, we want you to have a share of the treasure. If it hadn't been for you, the gold might have never been found. Meanwhile, Velma thought of something the gang could do with their share of the gold. The gang got busy and all the rest of the summer they took kids, ones who had never had a day of beach fun to Pirate's Cove in the Mystery Machine. They swam and surfed. They heard Captain Dan's exciting sea stories and they ate delicious cookouts served by Mystery Inc. But best of all, each day when the sea chest was opened, there were enough chocolate double loons and licorice pieces of eight in it for all the visitors at Pirate's Cove. And that's the end. So one of the reasons I think the Scooby cartoons were so popular, obviously because of Scooby, and I always told people that I did not like the ones with Scrappy quite as much. I don't know why, but I didn't like the ones that came um, a little bit later. I liked the original. Um, but one of the things that I think was really cool about um, the Scooby-Doo series was obviously because Scooby was the best friend of um, the gang and he always showed just his big heart and his good nature, which dogs do for us anyway. Dogs love unconditionally. And I think one of the better lessons um, from this particular book is that we too should love unconditionally. And yes, we have to have money to survive. We have to have money to buy our food and our clothes and our house, um, our housing. Um, you know, there are things that we have to have money um, in order to fulfill our needs. But, you know, Fred and Velma and Shaggy, and Daphne, Scooby, they all could have taken that treasure and they could have just blown it. They could have done something we call hoarding. They could have just kept it to themselves. But rather than do that, they shared with others, which is exactly what Jesus wants us to do. Um, each week, we are asked to give a portion of our earnings or our paychecks, or it could be allowance. Um, we're asked to give a portion back to God um, to our church or to ministries that will help others. And we're asked to do that with a cheerful heart. And definitely the Mystery Inc. gang, they did that. They gave back to the community with cheerful hearts. And they helped those who could really appreciate um, what they could do with that treasure. So, I hope that as we go into the weekend, um, going into next week, between now and when we meet again, that you will think about um, how you could take um, something maybe that's really valuable to you 
how you could share it, how you could possibly maybe um, give, for instance, some of your toys away um, to those who don't have toys. Um, maybe you could be better at sharing with your friends and with your brothers and sisters. Um, think about what matters to you and how you could make somebody else happy or help somebody else by sharing a portion of what God has blessed you with. So that's what I'd like for you to think about um, into the weekend until we meet again next week. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and have a good night prayer. And again, if you want to see more stories, please check out the collection on this page. I've got my Pooh Bear with me tonight, but I didn't, I didn't show him to you until now. Check out the stories in um, the collection on this page as well as our YouTube channel. And if you need help finding the YouTube channel, just let me, um, Pastor Kenneth, or Pastor Danny, or um, Miss Keisha, or Eric, or Doug know, and we'll help you find it. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are so grateful for all the blessings that you give to us. You bless us with family and friends. You bless us with new adventures every day, with the opportunity to learn more about your creation and to see how you're at work in the world. And Lord, one of those ways has to do with the gifts that you give to us that we can actually share with others. Sometimes we have to be creative with how we might think about sharing our gifts, but Lord, we just pray that you would press upon our hearts to not hoard our blessings to ourselves, but to see how we can divide up and share with others. Lord, we just pray that you would lead God and direct us in all that we do. We pray for good sleep, and we pray that you would keep us safe until we meet again. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So I hope that y'all have a great night, and I'll see you again next week. Bye, everybody.